After this video, you'll never feel the need to avoid the histogram again. Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, we're gonna be going over what the histogram is, how to use it, and how we can maximize it for our photo editing, and also in terms of our photo exposure and color balance. Let's go take a look. Okay, so if you've been using Zona Photo Studio X for some time, you've probably noticed that the histogram is right up here on the top of the manager, develop, and editor modules, right up here on the right corner. And the histogram tells us if our photo is either overexposed or underexposed, plus a lot of other data that we can take advantage of. We can think of the histogram as a type of sort of imaginary access with the darkest parts of the exposure on the left and the brightest parts on the right. Now the vertical axis tells us how many of these areas appear in the photo. So for example, we've got a really bright photo here with practically no dark areas. So naturally the histogram is going to be rising mainly here on the right side. And then in this other photo, it's going to be the exact opposite. So in this case, where the photo's exposure is fairly evenly distributed, the graph is going to stretch across the entire length of the histogram. So if we increase the exposure in this photo like this, we can see that the histogram moves to the right. And if we increase contrast, the graph stretches towards both ends and rises at the ends. And this is because by increasing contrast, we are essentially widening the difference between the light and dark areas and pushing up the highlights and shadows. For example, if you raise the black point here, we can see that the graph compresses at the bright side. And this is telling Zona Photo Studio where the darkest point in the photo is. And because we've set that point high enough, we've created this gap right here in the histogram. And look out for these gaps and avoid them completely if possible, because what this gap is telling us is that we've squeezed the highlights as well as the shadows together way too much and not only is this going to make you lose image data for this part of the exposure, but it simply just doesn't look good. Now, if I play around with this some more, I can find that increasing the highlights is going to raise the bright part of the graph and lowering the highlights is going to naturally lower it. And it works the same way for the shadows, only in the opposite direction. And this is how we can use the histogram to tweak our photo's exposure and even color balance it. Now I'll show you that in just a moment, but first let's take a look at how the histogram presents us with data and how we can view it in a way that makes sense to us and is applicable to our situation. Right click the histogram to open a drop down menu. I can choose how much of the right panel the histogram will take up and that is half full or even double the size. And in this video I want to show you so that you can see the difference as best as possible. So let's select double size. Normally I'm going to be using full size so I can see the histogram clearly, but still have enough room for adjustments in the right panel. Okay, so here at the bottom you can check or uncheck blowout warning. And this warning displays an exclamation mark at the top right if there are any blowouts in the photo. So it basically means that the graph is spilling off of the histogram and that there's a loss of data for the brightest parts of the photo. Uh, by default, brightness and color channels are selected to show exposure and all of the three color channels, so RGB. I can choose just one color channel so that they don't get mixed up and it's a lot easier to work with. So I have a choice of brightness, which only shows exposure, colors, which shows all of the color channels one over the other, like this, and then each color channel that makes up every color of the photo. So that's gonna be red, green, and blues. So let's select some of these to show how they work. Brightness speaks for itself. It shows us how much highlights and shadows are in the photo. And since we already showed how exposure makes the histogram move, let's move on to the color channels. So I'm gonna demonstrate by using each color channel separately so that the graphs don't get mixed up and it's much easier to read and understand. So for example, if I switch to red channel, I can see how and where red shows up in my exposure, like this. And if I want to adjust it, I need to go down to the tone curve and play around with different color channels right here. We've previously already gone over how to use the tone curve and you can find a link to that video below in the description. Here we can see that we have reds mainly in the middle section. So let's switch to the red channel in the tone curve 
And using a point that's roughly in the same place as in the histogram, let's reduce the red. And I can see that the red graph in the histogram as well as the degree of the red in the photo changes. As we already know from the tone curve video, taking away one color is going to add to another. So we often need to adjust and compensate for the other colors as well. And we can use this method to color balance the entire photo. We just simply switch between each channel in the tone curve as well as the histogram and then fine tune them until we're happy with our product. All right, so that's a little bit something about the histogram. Hopefully it is something you can now take advantage of and it's not just a scary graph in the top right of your editor. If you want to learn more about something in Zona Photo Studio X that's troubling you and you guys would like to see or find out more about that subject, please let us know in the comments. It's one way you can directly get to us and we can directly get back to you. Give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you haven't before so that you never miss a video and I will see you in the next one. Take care, adios.